The government just did it again. More news, more news, more news. That really doesn't affect Canadians' lives the way it's intended to. I believe that this nothing news is straight up vote buying at its finest, or perhaps it's worse. It's filled with sound bites and incoherent promises. It's like the advice to follow your passion. It sounds great, as long as you don't think too hard about it. I'll do my best to keep my opinions separate from the educational pieces in this conversation, but let's be real, this is a mess. See, I'm a part of the younger demographic that's being wooed by these promises. I'm in my early 30s. My siblings, they're younger than me, so they're definitely in this category. And the truth is, home affordability is something that we already discuss as they go on to their careers and their big boy jobs. They plan to buy their first home. And beyond that, in my professional standing, I work with successful retirees, many of whom have made helping their children with property acquisition and getting on the property ladder, they've made that a key part of their retirement and their estate plan. So I've got a unique insight in this. I also own multiple properties as a real estate investor. I'm sensitive to how these changes impact the market. And here's the kicker. These changes will likely benefit people like me far more than first-time home buyers that they claim to be helping. It's just the sad reality. I'll talk about that later briefly, but now let's talk about why these measures are actually bad for the people they're supposed to help. It's just a flaw in their design. Let me break down the changes. Let's start with the increase in the maximum insured mortgage from 1 million to 1.5 million. At first glance, this might seem like a win for buyers. Actually, I don't even know why I said that. It doesn't seem like a win to anybody. What first time home buyer skips the line, skips the progression in their asset and wealth accumulation and goes straight to the $1.5 million home? Now, in this press conference, Freeland talks about cities in Canada where a lot of the homes are over a million. But if you're young, and you're just getting started. Homie, you don't need the $1.5 million home. You can start with a condo. You can start with something more affordable. Now, it sounds like all of a sudden, we get this surge of people that are now able to get their first home. Right? Like, after all, more people will qualify for insured mortgages. That means mortgages where you put less than 20% down. If you can not put 20% down, unless you have other financial strategic reasons to do it, if you can not put 20% down, especially on your first home, you have no business buying a $1.5 million place. See, this move is just going to fuel demand in an already tight market, and it will have the exact opposite effect of what they are hoping to do, which is make homes more affordable. Let me explain how this works. When more people suddenly qualify for bigger mortgages, they all go out into the market, right? With more purchasing power. But the number of homes available doesn't just increase overnight. You've still got the same number of homes, but now with just more buyers and larger budgets who are competing for them. What happens in any market when demand increases and supply stays the same? Bingo! The prices go up. <laughs> Everything just gets more expensive. So instead of making homes more affordable, this policy is actually going to push the prices up even higher. This makes it even tougher for first-time homebuyers to get into the market because now they are competing with more people who can afford to bid higher for the same down payment, for a smaller down payment. 
If that's still too complicated, I'll break it down even further. For the minister, let's say I have a budget, magically, of a million dollars. That's unrealistic for a first-time home buyer, but let's say that's my budget. And suddenly, my purchasing power increased by just a meager $50,000. Now I can afford a million dollar and so one million and fifty thousand dollar home it's fantastic if i was the only person who got that boost then i have a competitive edge in the market i can now outbid you if you only have a million but that's not how policies and markets work in reality everyone gets that exact same fifty thousand dollar boost you get it your neighbor gets it and everybody else gets it everyone who's house hunting now has more money to spend, which means the pool of buyers is suddenly a little bit more flush with purchasing power and more cash. What does that lead to? Higher bids, higher competition, and ultimately higher prices. I know it's repetitive, but I just don't understand how this concept escapes the people that are supposed to be in charge of running our great country. So now that house that I was looking at which was originally listed for a million dollars is suddenly selling for a million and fifty or maybe even more because everyone has more money to throw at it in the end i am no better i am in no better position than where i was before in fact i'm actually worse off because i bought the same house for a higher price this is what happens when the government tries to solve a housing affordability issue by increasing access to larger mortgages without addressing the real root of the problem, which is supply. There are not enough homes to go around, not in, in the current population growth and change that we've had. They are, again... Increasing demand without increasing supply. It's just going to drive prices up, not down. Now, the policy sounds great in the headline, right? We're increasing mortgage affordability. It's just really, honestly, I feel like I'm so repetitive, but I just got to let this out. This will make housing even more expensive for first-time home buyers. It's a short-term promise. It's not even a short-term solution. It's a short-term promise, makes a good sound bite. It may or may not get them through their next by-election or, or whatever, but they're just thinking in political cycles here, not the future of the actual first-time homebuyers they're supposed to help. It's only going to push that dream of affordable home ownership further away from many Canadians. Let me talk about the 30-year amortization. It's, again, short-term gain, long-term. You're, you're, you're going to be paying more. Now, this news headline focused also on the reintroduction of the 30-year amortization for first-time homebuyers. At first glance, this seems like a good deal. After all, it lowers monthly payments and making homes more affordable from a monthly basis for people who feel like they're priced out of this market. But let's look beyond the surface. It's a win for sure. If you're stretching out your mortgage and you're lowering your, uh, your monthly payments, it's a win from that standpoint. If I'm just being very siloed in my, my view. But over the 30 years, it comes with serious long-term consequences, right? A long-term mortgage means that you end up paying more in interest, over the lifetime of that loan. Yes, your monthly payment is lower, but it's not because the house is more affordable. It's because you're spreading out the cost over a longer period of time. It's a bit like putting something on a credit card and choosing to pay the minimum balance each month only. And that might sound absurd, but that's really what the amortization schedule looks like when you defer the mortgage for that long. Sure, you get, you, you get to keep your immediate payments lower, but that does not change the fact that you are eventually going to pay far more than the original cost. So let me break this down with an example. Allow me to screen share here for a second. So imagine you're an individual that 
can afford $3,200 as your gross mortgage. I'm ignoring all the other stuff that comes with housing costs. You can get a $500,000 loan at 6% over a 25-year amortization. But what if we stretch that to 30 years? The same, the same $3,200 budget, now you can afford an extra $38,000. Nothing really changed except the amortization. So again, I'm going to go through this again. It looks like you have an increased purchasing power. Because now, instead of 500000 you can afford 538000 I don't really know how much else I can elaborate on this. So now your neighbor can afford the same $38,000 increase if they're going to spend the same monthly payment. So the monthly payment seems more affordable. You can get more. But you're going to end up paying a heavier price in the long run. This creates this illusion of affordability because your monthly payment stays the same. It helps people feel like they can manage their finances in the short term. But the reality is, especially as a first-time home buyer, they're locking themselves into far more expensive debt long term and a heavier financial burden instead of owning their home outright at 25 years. Uh, if you're doing this and you're looking at it from a pure affordability perspective, it doesn't matter if you can increase your um, increase your purchasing power, but you decide to push it and, and just get into the property ladder as soon as possible. If you're looking at that from a personal value perspective, as long as you're clear that this is a personal choice and not a financial choice, then that's on you, right? But overall, that increased interest and that payment for a longer period of time means that you're pre-allocating your future income to housing. That means it's being taken away from your saving. It's being taken away from your lifestyle at that time. It's being taken away from other things because you're now carving mortgage payments as a part of your income for a longer period of time. It just delays the financial burden. So if you're a first-time home buyer today, think of it as the impact in 5, 10, 15 years. In my eyes, it doesn't actually make the home's more affordable. It just leaves more room for speculation uh, and it spreads the cost over time. So let me take a second here to just address why I think this is actually better news for me as a property owner, as a real estate investor, uh, because let's be honest, these changes are not better for first-time home buyers. It's actually more beneficial for real estate investors that already have the assets, especially those that have been holding it for a long time. This is not as good as they intended to be for the first time home buyers that they claim to want to help. It's, it's just an empty promise, man. But anyway, let's continue. If property prices, which were, by the way, already getting soft, instead turn around, they stabilize or potentially even increase as interest rates are scheduled to go down, and that's the current sentiment. I can then refinance my properties. I can refinance my entire portfolio. And that's a huge advantage to me. Refinancing improves my cash flow, which allows me to manage my properties easier. I may even be able to take out equity from my portfolio, which I can then use to spend, invest elsewhere, or use to buy more properties. This is an unintended consequence. This might actually inv invite more real estate investors back into the market because that was also softening. So while it's being spun as a win for first-time home buyers, it's really for those who already own property that will benefit the most. Uh, let me wrap up, just give you a bit of a conclusion here. Like, what is the takeaway from this? These changes will not make housing more affordable. 
they're designed to sound good. They create the illusion of affordability while pushing prices higher and increasing debt for buyers. This is just increasing the debt ratio for the future generation. I don't want to sound cynical, but this is good, good for me. It, it's good for those who already have properties and they're already in the real estate market, but not for the first time home buyers that the measures are supposedly for. So before you buy into the headlines, think critically about who's actually winning here. And again, I might sound like I need to wear a tinfoil hat, but this move doesn't really signal to me that this government is for the people. These changes won't fix the housing market. They'll make it worse. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I don't know. I hope that I wasn't just rambling. I, as you can tell, I'm quite passionate. I'm, I, I'm annoyed by this. <laughs> if you think that these changes are actually going to help you or the people you care about, let me know. If you think this is just more smoke and mirrors, let me know. If you found this video insightful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate the uh, low production, just, hey, Hervin, just talking to you type of video. Um, I just wanted to get this out there right away. Very likely, I'll have to do a follow-up video that is a little bit more analytical because this, this got away from me and I think I let my emotion get the better of me. I will see you next week. In, in that video, we'll be talking about the bad habits that most retirees face. Hopefully, you stay tuned. Um, oh, more resources. We have a retirement checklist. Look at that below. Much love. God bless you. Bye.